I have to start this episode again by apologizing for the quality of the audio. As I had mentioned before, I was trying to record a live commentary on the PlayStation 5 with its um, internal recording, video recording system, and it just wasn't working for me. First few episodes of the series are going to be like this. Keep your eyes open for those goblins. The reports placed them in this area. It's all swamps from here. Watch your step, my lord. <laughs> and everything else. I'm trying my best to cut out the bad parts of audio where my original commentary existed, but unfortunately it's... There are lots of, like, background noise and that kind of stuff that I can't really do anything about. So here is how you access the sort of codex of the game where it goes and it shows you some things about like the the world that we have these different characters, the environment and all that kind of stuff and the enemies we're going to be facing. Unfortunately, it doesn't let you go back. You can only look at stuff that are in the scene, sort of like Amazon Prime Video where you can look up the actors that are in a scene. You can only see what's in this scene. So if you miss something, I don't know if you can go back and see it. But, you know, shouldn't have to read my video game, should I? <laughs> so Clive's on his first mission here. They've all fled from the blight. <laughs> and there's something that they... Oh, the old village of Stillwind is ahead. Not that there's a lot left of it. Gotta let them talk. With me. I wasn't sure why the combat was so easy in this demo. It seemed too easy, even for the beginning of the game. And the problem was that I had equipped a piece of armor, a couple of pieces of armor, which it's an interesting way to sort of make an easy mode in a game like this. So the reports were true. We should press on. There may be more ahead. We are really. So they give you a number of pieces of armor that you can equip that simplify the combat mechanics have Clive go and string attacks together as opposed to simply like instead of you forcing uh, forcing you to do it you just tap the square button and it goes and it completes like attacks when their cooldown is finished it's also something that makes dodging a whole lot easier and something that makes dodging something effortless on the player's part essentially removing the gameplay aspects from the game because everything just becomes that much easier and I didn't realize it at the time but that's what I had done was I had equipped this armor and I had just essentially turned the game's easy mode on I eventually realized what I had done and went and took the armor off I'm a little ways further into the game than I am recording this commentary for but I'm not that much further along so I'm still, I'm trying to record these episodes as I'm experiencing the game. So I'm not bringing a lot of foreknowledge into any episode. Because I'm playing through blind here. But anyway, I turned on easy mode without realizing it. I eventually realized what I had done and I go and I turn it off. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit before I figure that out. 
Here's one of the things that the game... They have an interesting way of sort of guiding the player around. Because a lot of the environments are sort of samey looking. I mean, they look good. But it's not like an old game where you have this wide path. Like in Final Fantasy X, even if you didn't have the world map or the, the mini-map in the corner, you would be able to find your way around because of how simplistic the environments are, how wide the pathways are, all that kind of stuff. As things get more detailed and, say, let's call it look more realistic, it becomes harder to um, visually see where it is you're supposed to go. And you can get yourself turned around when you're in a fight and all that kind of stuff. So what they do in this game is they put a bunch of treasure items just in the environment. So, like, if you see a treasure, you know, like, oh, that's the way I have to go. Usually these are a small amount of gill or a potion or something like that. Stuff that's not really important or that useful. I guess potions are useful, but they're just uh, somewhat insignificant in terms of their usefulness. But they do guide you around. They also have these little icons that appear on like doorways and stuff that you can open. Pushing you around. So Clive is on his first mission here. Oh look, we have butterflies guiding us to the ladder. He's on his first mission here. And he's 15, I think they said he was. So I guess maybe in this world that's the age where you're going to be sent on your first mission. He's also... A like good at what he does and he has this magic and stuff now that i wonder what it is that really differentiates i guess because he's the son of a king having the ability to cast magic everybody who all the slaves that i've seen so far cast magic and no one else seems to cast magic so except for except for um joshua so being a magic caster seemed to be what made you a slave, but I guess not. Well, I mean, it's not a definite thing, because Clive can cast magic. And then you have the dominance to more powerful people, like Titan and Shiva, as, as well as Joshua, who are... Like, they're not just casting magic, they have the ability to transform into the summon creatures, and that... I don't know, it's, it, I'm going to have to... I don't have a very good perspective on this yet, but it seems like there's a bit of an odd social dynamic between the magic casters and the people who can't cast magic. And on one hand, they seem like they're slaves, the magic casters, but I see examples of them not being slaves, so we'll have to see. We're trapped, my lord. I'm working on it. He's the leader. But we'll have to take care of his followers first. Care to fill the herd? As if you have to ask. The graphic style is kind of interesting here because, as a lot of people have probably pointed out by now, that the character designs for your humans have a little bit of a, an artistic design to them. Not quite realistic, not quite as real looking as a lot of other games that we've seen, especially in this generation of consoles. So it makes them look like a little not detailed. And then... It'll go in normal attacks. Shit! He's in fight to the friend! <sighs> On your feet, Sir Wade. Here it comes! But look at these monsters that we're fighting here. They're not, like, low-detailed in the way that the character, the player characters are, like the humans are. It's kind of interesting that we've reached a point 
where characters like what we're looking at in this game are considered low detail. <laughs> They're pretty high detailed compared to even what you would have seen in like the PlayStation 4 and stuff. But they look low detailed in comparison to the environment. And the monsters are really high detail. I mean, especially the goblins. Look at these things. It's crazy. <laughs> these mini boss battles. If I wish I had figured out that the I had set up the easy mode here, because the combat in this game is actually really nice. Like and the people tend not to go to the Final Fantasy series for the combat. But they have for the last several the last several um, entries in the mainline series tried to sort of innovate with the way the combat plays, looking for some new ways to make it fun. Now, they haven't always pulled this off. If you're not going to have like a turn-based battle system or the active time battle system like in the older games, what I would what I kind of preferred and what I kind of liked was sort of the Final Fantasy XII battle system where it was sort of MMO-ish, but not not quite. Where you had the characters with queue up attack commands and all that kind of stuff. And you could interrupt it, and you would have to interrupt it at times in order to do the commands that you really wanted. But you would set up these sort of, they call them the gambits, which is sort of AI routines. The characters do things, so you don't have to control the other party members. But, like, say Final Fantasy XIII, I think they went in the wrong direction, tried to make everything too fast-paced, and then simplified the combat too much for the player. Come back and fight, you coward! After him, before he summons the rest. This, though, I mean, I'd say... The last couple, like uh, Final Fantasy XV, was very real time, and I'd say it plays similarly to this. It's been a while since I've played XV, so I can't really say for sure. But it was real time, and it did sort of feel like this. Maybe not quite as tight. Final Fantasy VII Remake was similar-ish to this, but it did have some different gameplay mechanics that changed it. See, look at this. Treasure items along the way just to guide you about. Then you just run over top of it. It's so stupid. Firing off the fireball, but you can't hit him. This ends now. The Marlborough, but they call them marble here for whatever reason. This seems a little bit weird because the marble, like, they were never really, like, boss characters or boss enemies. But they were enemies that were always considered to be relatively powerful and they'd be the kind of thing that you would encounter in, like, the mid to the late end of the game. So it seems a little weird to be encountering one this early in the game, but it is kind of a boss, so I, I guess it's sort of, they do it a little bit justice. I love the character, the, the enemy design in this game. I've always loved the enemy design in all the Final Fantasy games. Some of them are just so creative. I mean, this weird uh, plant monster thing that doesn't come across like um, like a little shop of horrors kind of thing, like what you see in so many other video games where you have carnivorous plants. Like the, uh, whatever they call the ones in the pots in, in Super Mario Brothers, they, they're just, they look like Audrey 2s. And the the Marlboro though, I mean this thing, this thing looks ridiculous. 
I'm not a huge fan of the cinematic actions that you see in a lot of action games nowadays because it sort of like drags you out of the actual gameplay. So it's like, oh, oh, do some quick time events now. Uh, no, just let me, let's let me play the game. You know, let's say maybe this plays like uh, Devil May Cry in a lot of ways. A Devil May Cry RPG where you <laughs> dodging is important. Blocking, not really. You don't really block. You do parries and stuff. But dodging is important. Uh, attacking, moving, switching abilities, that kind of stuff. All that stuff's really important in this. So that's kind of Devil May Cry like. So we have this thing called the Blight, which this appears to be a blighted land. And I'm not. The, the game hasn't really, like, dished out any information as to what the hell the Blight is, but it does seem to be the sort of. What is probably going to be the overall, sort of, like, in overall threat of the series like whatever the blight is or whatever is causing the blight is going to be the primary threat of the game aside from like all the sort of personal issues that clive is going to have his personal journey and all that kind of shit since the game doesn't tell you what the blight is it seems like it might be some kind of um when they mean a blight, they mean like a disease, like a diseased land. So when you have like uh, blighted crops or something like that, you have all of your plants die. So let's have you say you have a field of corn. You get a blight moves across there and it, it goes in and it just kills off all of your crop. And that's something like that happening in a world that is very dependent on like agriculture. Well, I guess all civilizations are. But you get, like, this medieval setting where their food supply is being destroyed by this blight. It can really fuck them up. That could be, like, a world-ending or civilization-ending kind of thing. It, the kind of thing that maybe, like, might have resulted in the Bronze Age collapse kind of issue. So we're here, though. It seems maybe the blight might be something a little bit more magical in terms of its origin, though. Because we have this... We have this uh, old town that was abandoned because of the blight, seemingly anyway. But it's not just like a disease. Sure, most of the trees are dead. I do see some living plants, but most of the trees are dead. But for some reason, the environment is flooded. And you have a lot of monsters. So maybe the blight in this game is something sort of like the blight in the Dragon Age series, where... It wasn't just the diseased land. It was also the monsters that came with it. The Darkspawn in the Dragon Age series. Maybe it's goblins and marbles in Final Fantasy 16. I almost got the number wrong. It's too many of these. <laughs> My lord. Thanks. I thought I'd see it. Not just goblins in Rosaria, but morbles too. I'll petition His Grace to send a detachment. If we don't stop them here, they'll be at our gates before long. We should get moving. We don't want to be caught out here after dark. If we set off now, we can still reach Phoenix Gate before nightfall. Thank <laughs> you. 